In this second bonus feature of palette effects, we're gonna continue along this whole line of color, but instead of looking at color tools, we're gonna to be looking at one of the most natural ways to boost the saturation and contrast in your image using the data in your image. Okay, so it sounds kind of confusing at first, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to do it, and then I'm gonna show you why it works, okay? And it's gonna be using something called the subtract blend mode, of all things, the subtract blend mode and the colors that already exist in your image. The beauty of this is there's no guesswork. It tells you exactly what needs more saturation by removing the things that don't work. So the first way that we can do this is to actually make a copy of our image. So if we're working on our image like this, we would just press Command or Control J. But if we had a bunch of work going on, I would suggest doing a stamp. So if you had layers, let's say we had a curves adjustment layer on here, just say boom curves. Okay. What I would suggest you do here is press Control Shift Alt and E, and that will make a stamp of all of your work. That means that all of this stuff gets in there. It's not just a duplicate of your background layer. It's actually a stamp of everything that's been done underneath this layer. The next thing we need to do is press Command or Control I, and that's going to invert our image and look horrible. And does for a reason, because what it's doing is it's taking all of our blacks and turning them white, taking all of our greens and turning them magenta, taking all of our blues and turning them yellow, and taking all of our reds and turning them cyan. So it's inverting everything on the color wheel. So it's using the, the laws of complementary color theory here to reverse all of our colors with its complement on the color wheel. That's what invert does. So now we need to use the data that we just got from this to boost the saturation and the contrast in our image. What we're gonna do is go to the blend mode and select subtract. And it's gonna look like junk, okay? Because what's happening here, there's an algorithm that's happening. What's happening is every single color that is being applied on the invert side of this is subtracting itself from the underlying colors. So anything that is a, a mild green is now gonna get a lot of green added to it because we're actually taking away the magenta that is in that color. So the trick here is to go into your opacity and drop this down to about 15% or so. Now we'll turn this layer off, turn this layer on. If you need more, just go ahead and increase it, and you'll see that your contrast and your colors are both being increased at the exact same time. Why is it doing this? Well, the reason why it's doing this is because you're actually removing the culprit colors that are holding those colors back from being the color that they want to be. What do you mean, Blake? Okay, so here's the deal. When I used to be a painter, this is what I would do. I had my palette, right? And let's say I had the color blue uh, on my palette. And that color blue is really saturated. What I would do is I would take its, its complement and I would mix it with its complement to subdue the saturation of the color blue, which would then take this super saturated version of the color blue and it would make it less saturated by adding its complement. What we're doing with this subtract blend mode, instead of adding the complement to it, we are subtracting the complement from it. So we're basically saying, okay, greens, I know you wanna shine and I know you wanna be fruitful, but as it stands right now, there is a little bit too much magenta in you. So let's remove that magenta from you. Now there's another way to do this. It's a really simple way to do this. If we come in here and we go down here to the invert blend mode, this will invert anything that is happening underneath this layer. The reason why I prefer to do the invert method as opposed to the stamp or the duplicate is because a stamp or a duplicate is essentially going to be a carbon copy of everything that's done. Whereas this, because it's an invert layer, will allow itself to change and modify based on what colors get added to it. So we've got this set to invert. Next, we need to go to subtract. And then we need to come over here to opacity and drop this down to about 15 or let's say 25% so we can really see. So now if we were to take any of the things that we learned in the first special feature of let's say a hue saturation adjustment and we were to go into any one of these individual colors, as we move and modify this, it is going to automatically be fluctuating how much tone and color needs to happen in this image below with this invert layer on top. That's why I prefer the invert layer because it actually works while you're working on your photograph. So this is actually the most natural way to boost the saturation and the contrast in your image. And why are we boosting contrast in your image? Exactly for that reason. We're subtracting anything that would be holding back those tonal values from being pure forms of black. As it stands, if you were to go ahead and go into your invert blend mode again and change this back to normal, 
and bring the percentage all the way up. Again, it doesn't look very good. That's why we need to drop the, bring this into subtract and drop that opacity so we can start applying the colors to our colors. Now, how does this differ from just going into a hue saturation adjustment layer and just slamming up the saturation? Well, you see here, what we're doing when we slam up the saturation here is it's not necessarily removing the culprit color from allowing that one color to boost. What it's doing is it's just adding a ton of color to the color that already exists and it's not quite working out. Let's go ahead and look at this in a different example. So here is a, a, a more of a demonstration image that will probably help you out a little bit. So what I've done here is I've created a very low saturation blue, green, and red right here. And over here on the left-hand side, you see a mild gray, a white, a black, and a dark gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that trick. We're going to make a new adjustment layer. It's going to be an invert adjustment layer. We're going to change that blend mode to subtract and watch what happens. Now, look at our colors. All of our colors are actually getting the most form of saturation that they can get for the color that they are. And the reason why that's happening again is because this blue right here, the reason why this blue is so blue, if we go into it, look at what happens here. When we go into this color blue, you can see that our red is at 125, our green is at 115 and our blue is at 201. Well, now if we were to do something like this, turn on that blend mode and let's say we just go ahead and go into our brush tool and we press Alt or Option and click on this color to see what this color is now. Notice how our blue is now 147. Essentially what we've done is we've subtracted all of that red and that green that were holding that image back. So let's go and take a look at that color again. 201 blue, notice how right here green is 115 and red is 125. It's subtracting all of that red and green that is holding that blue back from being a potent form of blue. Same thing is happening with green, same thing is happening with red. Now the interesting thing is what's happening over here. Notice how white does not change at all and black does not change at all. When we do this method, our whites and our blacks, our, our darkest form of black and our lightest form of white being zero in the, in the black scale and 255 in the white scale, are not losing any information at all. But notice how, if we turn this layer off, we have a light gray swatch here and a dark gray swatch here. That dark gray almost turns black. That's why the contrast increases in our image. The contrast, our gray areas, our tonal areas are also increasing throughout this subtract process. I know this isn't easily remembered here, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you that on the palette effects palette here, if you open this up right here in the color section is a saturation boost button. By default, it's set to subtract at 15%, but you can change that percentage to whatever percentage you like to get the saturation and contrast boost that you need in your image that you're working on. So I know that this isn't the easiest thing to wrap your head around. And the subtract blend mode you may have never used ever in your life, because I know I didn't until I started discovering color theory and how I could use color theory to my benefit. But essentially what the subtract blend mode does, just so that if you're taking notes or if you're thinking about this, the subtract blend mode reduces the amount of color that is holding a color back from being against highest potency of color. So if you have a green that is not very saturated, it's going to be removing magenta from that green and applying itself to that image. And that's why it's a really good idea to keep this layer on top of all of your work. So as you edit things underneath, things can change according to the saturation that you need in your image. That's why I consider this the most natural saturation and contrast boost you can ever get in Photoshop. Mm -hmm.